All right. Hello, everybody. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on where you are. My name is Darcy Larone, Business Development Manager at Opal RT Technologies, and we are very glad you joined us today for our webinar featuring the challenges in protection relay testing for tomorrow's power grid. As you will see in our GoToWebinar control panel, there are several menu options. The Control Panel Hide button, as well as the Microphone Mute and Unmute status, which will be controlled by our administrator. Click to ask a question. You can click on this, whereby the administrator may unmute you, as though we will prefer to gather all questions for the end of our presentation. So click hands up and we will address your questions. And we encourage you to type a question throughout this webinar in the final icon box. Our presenters today are Mr. Etienne Leduc, the Application Specialist here at Opal RT Technologies, Dr. Innocent Kamwa, our Scientific Coordinator for Smart Grid at the Hydro-Quebec Research Institute, also known as IREC, and last but not least, our Research and Development Director, Mr. Vincent Lapointe, here at Opal RT Technologies. Without further ado, may I present our application specialist, Mr. Etienne Leduc. So, hi everybody. First, I'll give you an overview of our company, what we do, where we come from, what our mission is. Right after that, I'll show you live how this is a protected relay for the real time simulator works, how the hardware works, what can we software for you, and how we plan, how we plan out test cases for which the relay could not be made at the show. I'll then further explain the capabilities and features of practicing. I'll then discuss the challenges that are met today in the field of protective relay testing. Right after, we'll benefit from the intervention of Dr. Innocent and one. We'll contribute to the topic right under their control of assistance that are often called WAX. After this intervention, I will summarize and there will finally be a period for you to ask a uh, question. So, OPAR Technology was founded in 1997 by Jean Belanger, who is a former researcher at the Hydro-Quebec Research Institute, also called Eric. We have flown the series of analog simulator labs there and worked over 25 years. So, um, hi everybody. So we had a sorry, we had a technical issue with the micro. You probably have noticed. Uh, I just changed the micro, so I may start again from uh, the beginning of this slide. Um, so, Opal RT Technologies was founded in 1997 by Jean Belanger, who is a former research researcher at the Hydro Quebec Research Institute, also called IREC. He helped build the first analog simulator lab there and worked over 25 years in the simulation field before parting with his employer and founding his own company on the basis of parallel computation. What differentiates us is, uh, among other things, a strong research and development department that benefits from over 20% in turnover reinvestment. We have a large and diversified customer base, mainly in the following fields. Power electronics, power systems, automotive, and aerospace. We also collaborate a lot with the educational fields. Most of them work with rapid control prototyping, hardware in the loop, and MATLAB Simulink integration. We 
we are a one-stop shop for model-based engineering simulators. Here's the map of our global presence. As our customers are, our offices and distributors are spread out through the entire world. We have our headquarters in Montreal, Quebec. We also have offices in Paris, Detroit, and Bangalore in India. There are finally many distributors elsewhere around the world to be closer to our customers. Among them, you can see here a few of the electric utilities and power electronics companies we deal with. We have a strong partnership with Hydro-Quebec, and there are many other big companies that rely on our simulators to execute their tests and studies such as ABB, Mitsubishi Electric, GE, and so on. What makes Opal RT unique is, among other things, our fast innovation. Um, so, and, and we uh, have developed for that uh, our ePower Grid uh, product family. So here's an overview. Uh, it covers this complete spectrum of power system analysis and studies. Emegasim was our first solution when the company was founded. And then we extended to a HyperSim that is better to simulate large power system. And then we developed eFaser Sim for very, very large networks about, of up to 20,000 nodes. And for very fast simulation, we developed eFPGA Sim that allows very fast switching frequencies without you having to program the FPGA yourself. And now, the moment you've all been, all been waiting for, it's time for the live demo. First, I will uh, quickly show an overview of the hardware we're going to use before describing the 500 kV transmission line model that helped us characterize the overcurrent behavior of the relay. Our test made us uh, find out that there are some cases for which the relay did not behave as expected. And finally, I will go through the steps that brought us to those results. Um, so right now I'll uh, start sharing a, a camera so you can see the test set. If uh, you can, uh, you can actually enlarge the image on your computer uh, so that you see better. So um, down there we have the OP5600 on which we run a HyperSim that is used for the simulation. It, this has uh, 12 cores that uh, goes with a frequency of 3.3 gigahertz. Um, we have an Ethernet cable uh, that is connected to a switch here that is connected to our relay. This is a P444 distance relay from uh, Alstom. Um, we use protocol IEC 61850, so we have two different I.O. cards at the back of the relay for goose and sample value messages uh, to be sent through the switch to our simulator. And uh, from the switch goes also a cable to our computer so that we can monitor, for example, what happens on the network uh, with, the, with the software that analyzes the different messages on the network. You can also see here in OP4500, this is our brand new, uh, very accessible solution. Uh, we have uh, currently a collaboration with uh, Hydro-Quebec who will use this, uh, this OP4500 to um, to simulate the, the algorithm they develop uh, for new protection, uh, for, new, for, for new phasor measurement units and uh, protective relays. And they, they use this simulator as a hardware in the loop uh, with a uh, HyperSim uh, simulator. So they connect both simulators together. Um, so now I can uh, switch back to the PC. You can keep your uh, you can keep the window of the camera open, so we can see during the simulation that the LEDs on the left hand side here will light on uh, when a fault occurs. So here's the model we use to uh, run our tests. Uh, we have a 500 kV transmission line here in the middle. We have CT and PT models here on the left-hand side. There are sensors on it that are mapped to our driver for communication with uh, our MyCom P444. 
Uh, as I mentioned, sampled values from the protocol IEC 61850 uh, are sent to the relay, which will analyze the data and send back uh, goose messages for uh, circuit breaker tripping. In this case here, we have only one, uh, one relay available as a hardware, so we control both circuit breakers with the same relay, but usually we, you would have a relay on the uh, west side and a relay on the east side to control uh, one breaker per relay. Then we can go in simulation mode. Um, I can do a, a task mapping, so you can see here that the tasks are um, the tasks are mapped automatically to the different cores. In this case, since it's a small model, there's only one core running the simulation. We run at a time step of 50 microseconds, but the calculation in this case take only 10 microseconds. If I start the simulation and go to scope view, scope view is the your tool for a quick analysis of the different curves before uh, before coding your uh, test automation with test view, which I will show uh, right after this. Uh, the trigger, uh, the trigger bus is, is unchecked so that you can see uh, in the beginning the steady state. And once I uh, click the trigger box, when I press play, the fault will, will occur. The relay will analyze the data thanks to the sampled values and will send a goose back, which you will see here. If you've seen here on the camera, we now have a red LED. Uh, this LED shows that there was a tripping, uh, that the tripping tr occurred. And if you, uh, if you were looking at the time of default, this LED here over also lighted on for a short time. On, the, on our screen with the curves, you can see the CT curves, so you can see the high current here. Uh, high current that goes up to about uh, 5 kilo amperes. Um, if I do a second test, you will see here uh, that the relay tripped. In the first case, the relay did not trip uh, because of the because of the length of the because of the duration of the fault. In this case here, you will see on the right hand side a circuit breaker. We have the fault here occur. The circuit uh, the, the relay sent a trip a tripping uh, command back. So we have the fault clearance here, and then the fault disappears uh, by itself before reconnecting the breaker to uh, reconnect with both sides of the, networks to, of the network together. So you can see here the, double, the, the window RMS uh, value of the current. This is used by the relay to analyze data. Uh, as an overcurrent characteristic, we have two levels. We have uh, 2 ampere and 50, microsecond, uh, 50 milliseconds, and we have 2.775 amperes, uh, in, this, in which case the relay should trip right uh, uh, right after the default occurs. Uh, it's also possible to do many acquisitions one after another. As in this case, I've put five. You see the different curves change five times. So there are many, uh, many options with this software. I can also show you here on the right-hand side, those all the, this is the, the degree with which you choose which signals are shown in the window uh, I explained uh, sooner. You can see on the right-hand side there are many, many functions available. Actually, all in all, there are, I think, 96 different functions you can use to analyze your different curves. And this is also available then in test view when you automate your test. So this is what I'm showing you right now. This is test view. Uh, there are all in all 24 different functions to uh, automate your tests, and you can do whatever can go through your mind with all these functions, it's enough. You can see here uh, in the, uh, the right window, a small example. Those few lines of code allowed me to run uh, 700 tests. And um, so, uh, the, most, the, the most important block would be this one here, the processing, in which you have access to the function I described in scope view. So you have your different functions and your different signals you uh, on the different signals you want to analyze. There's post-processing at the end of the tests. And there's also a possibility to save your different curves using criteria. So what happens when I press play? You see here actually uh, everything that would happen when you use a scope view, unless this time it's automated. So the model will be compiled, uh, started, 
the different parameters you set in your code will be uh, will be set. And after a few seconds, your 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 bunch of tests can start. You will see through this uh, window all the different uh, all the different uh, results of the functions you program in your processing block. So this is just to give you an overview. Uh, to run 700 tests takes some time. So what I did is uh, do the test right before, so I can show you the kind of report that is generated. In this case, we uh, we change the fault impedance and the duration of the fault. Uh, over uh, all in all 700 tests and we, verf we, we measured in the maximum RMS current and the reaction time of the relay. In the case you have a very big number, it means that the relay did not trip. This data can be then exported to a uh, CSV comma separated value file for further analysis. So in this case here we have the data on the left hand side, we have a distribution of the of the relay tripping time, this comes from another test. I just wanted to show you what kind of analysis you can do. Or in, the, in, the, in the case of the test I've just shown you, we made those curves. So this is really an overcurrent characterization. We have the characteristic here, uh, what I've programmed in the relay. You, have, you can see here all the tests that are separated here through uh, between tripped and did not trip. And the most important is this uh, graph here on which you can see tests uh, or situations in which you really tripped but should not have here and in a situation in which you really did not trip but should have on this height, on this side here. So it's really important to run those tests so then you can go to your manufacturer and ask him what's going on. So uh, we can come back then to the presentation. Thank you very much, Etienne. We will take a brief pause here, ladies and gentlemen, for our first poll question, which will be presented to you momentarily. Our poll question consists of what equipment are you currently using for protection relay testing? Multiple choice. I select all that apply, Omicron, RTDS, Doble, Megger, or in-house systems. Hey, thank you very much. And again, thank you for that presentation, uh, Etienne. Next presenting, Dr. Kamwa. Uh, not yet. Actually. Oh, not yet. Excuse me. Um, Etienne, back to you. I will. I will just uh, summarize first the the demo for the people who arrived late. Um, so to summarize quickly the content of this live demo, uh, we exported data from uh, TestView to Microsoft Excel in order to analyze the data acquired through 700 tests. As a result, we found out that there was a significant amount of situations for which the relay tripped and, uh, but should not have, uh, or the relay did not trip, although it should have. This is a good example of the tests you most likely want to run before integrating your relays to the real power systems. You can then directly go to your relay manufacturer and ask him what's going on. Um, for those who missed the live demo, HyperSim is a modeling software and tr strong transient solver designed specifically for simulating both small and large scale power systems in real time. HyperSim provides a rich model library with many instrument transformer models. Um, power electronic converters, as well as, as uh, generators, transformers, lines, motors, loads, virtual IED and relay functions. The software, as is our whole solution, is very flexible. You can uh, import EMTP RV networks and use them as subsystem in your HyperSim model. It is possible to uh, build your own library using functions you've designed with existing blocks, or you can write C code to create new blocks. 
and can then reuse those uh, blocks later on in the same or in other models. HyperSim is also capable of interfacing with Simulink control functions, as well as importing power systems designed in Simulink. And there is a broad spectrum of protection related protocol already implemented in HyperSim, but the software also allows for interfacing with any other protocol on the customer's demand. Uh, HyperSim also provides flexibility in terms of fault and disturbances. With this software, the protection engineer can simulate communication failures such as undetected bit errors, undetected frame errors resulting from synchronization errors, for example, as well as a data loss or data overflow. It's also possible to simulate various apparatus internal faults, such as in these uh, coupled lines, uh, transformers or generators. It's possible to set uh, different fault locations, types or interception angles thanks to this GUI. You can see here uh, five different rows, in this case for different operations. Uh, it's possible to build a, a large network with many of these blocks and enable or disable uh, default occurrence for each and every block as needed. The extent of this is that uh, different faults can be simulated uh, simultaneously or in cascade very easily. Um, then ScopeView is a simple acquisition tool, especially used for short test and targeted analysis, as we've seen in uh, the demo. Any signal from uh, within the model can be monitored and analyzed through various mathematical functions. All in all, there are uh, 96 different functions, such as trigonometric, statistical functions, as well as spectral analysis and harmonic analysis related functions. Um, Regarding test view, well, it's your best friend when it comes to executing thousands of tests and analyzing the whole of the output data. You can perform Monte Carlo analysis to find the worst case scenario and output the result to an automatically generated report. If you're tired of crawling under tons of data, the intelligent data management system is for you. Working with criteria, only the relevant data from your thousand tests is saved in a database with full documentation by the intelligent data management system for future test auditing. This is particularly useful for those who are responsible for the correct functioning of their devices. It's as simple as pressing play. Finally, your data can be exported to various file formats. In a live demo, we've seen how useful that is for further analysis, uh, for example, in Microsoft Excel or MATLAB. Very many challenges related to protection relay testing are met today in the field and in the research industry. There are often more complex applications such as uh, wind turbines, very fast switching power electronics, photovoltaic cells, and a battery in electric vehicle technologies. This implies, among other things, new converter topologies and smart grid considerations. These systems cannot be protected the same way as what was already being done. So this increases the complexity of the algorithms used. Also, there is an increased number of relay functionalities, mixing the main function of a relay, often already very complex, with backup functions, blocking schemes, or other functionalities is a daunting task. Even modifying an already programmed relay to include a new functionality might be quite elaborate. A third challenge might be the inter interoperability between different devices from often different vendors. Mixing these protocols from substation, uh, for substation internal and external communication can be sometimes unfeasible without the right knowledge. Although the protocols are very stringent, the interpretation of the different vendors often diverge, resulting in none or hardly compatible devices. There exist some tools to help you out with this task, such as Hillings STS, which provides an easy way to program communication schemes between IEDs of different vendors using protocol IEC 61850. We can interface with third-party softwares. This is something that has been done a lot in the past. There is additionally a lot of new types of equipment and systems, such as merging units, uh, phaser data concentrators, wide area monitoring systems, optical instrument uh, transformers, and phaser measurement units. These imply new communication schemes, and especially new sources of faults in a power system. The protection engineer needs to understand the impact of such issues, how to avoid them, 
and how to detect them when they cannot be avoided. When considering a communication network, especially when it's large, synchronizing data with timestamps is another difficult challenge. There are many options out there in terms of GPS protocols such as ERIC-B, uh, 1588, and 1PPS. It's not easy to understand and interface them all. Thank you, Etienne. We're going to take a brief pause for our second poll question. This question is, what is your field of interest regarding protection relay testing? Again, multiple choice, security, communication and interoperability, developing new protection functionalities. Please go ahead and vote. Thank you very much. We'll hand it back to Etienne. Thank you. Um, a new secu another security challenge is the security. Uh, the advent of Ethernet-based protocols raised the concern of uh, data security. Indeed, the intervention of a malicious software or person could cause considerable damage within a substation, or worse, on the whole network, customers included. A lot of research will be required in the coming years to make sure the electrical infrastructure is kept safe. This video shows something that happened here in Montreal two weeks ago when production system failed to cut power to the distribution system. Well, Hydro-Quebec most certainly hadn't tested this part of the network with HyperSim. From what we can see in the video, the high impedance arcing fault causes the electric arc to move along the wires until it reaches a transformer on a distribution pole, where it explodes and the electric arc trips the circuit breaker causing the power outage in the neighborhood for a few days. Fortunately, nobody was injured, but the consequences could have been really worse. It's unfortunately not an isolated ph phenomenon around the world. This and other events provide compelling evidence that aging electrical infrastructure is in serious need of modernization. Traditional relay engineers will test their relays by either replaying an offline simulation, or using an Omicron mega double test set, or by replaying recorded data from the field. These solutions correspond to a one-way communication, thus not allowing uh, test recording and data archiving. It's a good and proven method for most traditional and easy cases, but there are some limitations. An open loop system prevents using data that is generated by the relay to impact the tests that are being run. Also, some tests, like fixing the voltage and ramping up the current for, uh, to the tripping value, are not realistic. More and more, protective relays recognize patterns in the voltage and current values, so that such a test might not be working anymore in some circumstances. Additionally, no test related uh, uh, to communication protocols can be run with such test sets, such as loss of data packets or data alteration. When using a simulator, the testing approach is enhanced. Here, as I've shown you in the live demo, HyperSim is running in an OP5600. In this case, communication goes both ways. Analog and digital values are sent to the relay, and digital values are fed back into the simulator. This information is linked to a breaker and impacts the power system behavior, which will impact, in turn, the behavior of the relay on the test. Real-time simulators are used by advanced testing laboratories for complex cases and developing testing new algorithms using new technologies. There are many advantages, such as the closed-loop uh, testing I've mentioned before, as well as quickly getting detailed electromagnetic transient simulation using uh, small time steps thanks to parallel computation. You can also simulate complex prediction schemes using any amount of both virtual and real IEDs and observe the effect of these schemes on the grid. 
I will now give Dr. Kamwa control of the presentation for the next few minutes. He will discuss the protection relay design methodology and talk about wide area monitoring systems. Uh, thank you, Etienne. So my uh, goal is to share with you uh, our experience uh, in developing, in using uh, simulation in protection testing, but also and more importantly in uh, developing advanced uh, control and automation schemes. So uh, at AREC we have been using uh, simulation for decades, as you know. We started with transient analyzer, uh, transient network analyzer in the mid-70s uh, with uh, uh, the test of uh, static VAR compensation before commissioning. And then, uh, more recently, we moved to completely uh, digital uh, network simulation using IPERC. And uh, at IREC, we are acting as a service provider for uh, the transmission system operator because we, uh, the, actually, the HyperSIM, uh, which is installed at the research center, is an asset owned by the transmission system operator. So we act as a system provider for testing power electronics uh, related to uh, static VAR compensation. Uh, we are presently testing one of the new devices which will be uh, commissioned in December at the Boudelil substation, for instance. We have also used HyperSIM for testing uh, in large-scale integration of uh, wind energy in the Gaspésia Peninsula. So we, uh, as a primary uh, mission, uh, act as a provider for of advanced simulation to the transmission system owner. But, and this is the, the, the core of my uh, next few slides, we also use HyperSIM for, as a tool for designing advanced control schemes. And uh, in the slide shown uh, to you, uh, we summarize the methodology behind uh, our, our approach of designing advanced schemes advanced protection scheme. So we started, we use a stage gate process. Our innovation strategy consists of three stage process, uh, of, uh, of using a stage gate process, whereby we develop the idea in stage one and two, and then in stage three, we have in our hand a simulating model which summarizes the design. Today, design is very complicated, and uh, we, uh, in our practice, are, are using more and more fuzzy logic, which imply a lot of variables, which imply uh, membership function to, to convert crisp variable into, uh, to convert crisp variable into fuzzy variable, and allow a more secure decision without uh, many settings. So. Uh, the next slide show you uh, an example of a uh, product which was designed using the methodology just shown to you. Uh, and it is a new predictive out of state protection, which is characterized by uh, a setting less approach. So we don't need setting uh, which will change with uh, the network. And uh, the, the slide show you the superposition of uh, simulating uh, uh, simulation with uh, playback of the actual relay. On the bottom right, you see the two relay on the test. On the top right, you see the conventional uh, relay, which uh, we are benchmarking uh, with the new relay. And uh, on the right, you see the, the display. So uh, essentially, the playback show that the, the, the new proposal is very good in terms of uh, the time response, etc. But more importantly, the superimposition of Simulink with HyperSIM uh, is a proof of concept of the accuracy of implementation in the new boxes, in the new relay, which are shown on the bottom right. 
Next, uh, next one. So uh, after, so uh, in if you so in the previous slide we show how it can be important to uh, go, to dive into the protection algorithm to plot the rules, to plot the different features which are used to make the uh, appropriate decision, uh, and we uh, show how a simulink can help on that. In this case, we use Simulink uh, not in testing the protection as such, but to interconnect many different components in a setup which cannot be replicated easily in the field without uh, going into a lot of investment. So here we have a setup consisting of many PMUs uh, from different vendors, and we have in the middle, you have the controller in the substation uh, uh, on the right uh, on the right, you have a GPS device with another IED in the local substation. So it is a very complicated uh, control system which uh, combine local decision with wide area decision using telecommunication and remote measurement. And all the scheme should be uh, should react uh, in less than 200 milliseconds to be uh, accepted. So. We use Simulink, we use HyperSim to simulate this uh, complex system, including communication aspect and interoperability of the various components. Uh, uh, so this is what we have actually implemented, and it is uh, currently running in our lab. We have uh, essentially a network which is being simulated in HyperSIM, uh, it is the full representation of Hydro Quebec grid with 300 buses uh, and uh, the multi terminal link between uh, LG, uh, LG1, uh, LG2A and uh, the New England. And we have uh, many, all the components which will be used in the pilot experiment, which is already ongoing in the field, by the way. And we have, uh, so we have uh, three substations involved. All of them are represented here by one PMU. And we also have uh, a PDC, uh, an SP, a substation PDC. Uh, we also have uh, the controller, which, is, uh, which will be interfaced with this uh, static bar compensator to modulate the voltage in case of uh, a severe event of the network uh, with risk of voltage collapse. So I perceive uh, is very, very useful in proving the concept. Uh, of course, you can use another tool, but my message here is that you need uh, a proof of concept in the lab, otherwise uh, the, the pilot will be uh, very expensive and, and too risky. So the next step we want to, to push here is to develop uh, a PMU uh, we, what we call it a PMU C, a PMU slash C. Uh, we have written a lot of transaction paper around that topic, but the next step uh, we we consider is to use a, a device just described by Etienne uh, to uh, implement uh, that algorithm in a fast prototyping mode, and then come back to Simulink to showcase the performance on that P, of that PMU on the actual. Uh, series compensated Hydro Quebec network and benchmark the new prototype with existing vendor uh, PMU. Uh, by the way, we are not really satisfied with existing vendor PMU, and that's one reason we are continuing uh, our work in developing more robust and performant algorithm for PMU C. Okay, that's all. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Kamwa. So um, to summarize our solution in one page, we have not only a software and hardware-based solution, but we also provide services. In terms of software, we have, among others, HyperSim that is good for both small and very large-scale models, ScopeView and TestView uh, that allow for uh, data analysis and test automation. In terms of hardware, we provide a great amount of standard IOs, drivers and protocols, as well as a mapping box to interface with 
high power signals. In terms of services, we provide consulting, very flexible customization, new product development, commissioning, and training. Finally, I'll uh, describe our new hardware, the OP4500. That is a new compact, portable, and large, uh, and has a large number of robust I/O channels. It's compatible with ArchiLab, our other software that was not presented today since we use HyperSim, MATLAB, uh, MATLAB Simulink, RTW, Xilinx System Generator, and LabVIEW. Uh, it's open and optimized for power electronics. And the big point here is that uh, it starts at about 20K, so it's a very accessible hardware. Thank you very much, Etienne. Thank you, Dr. Kamwa. Ladies and gentlemen, that concludes our presentation for today. I hope you found it as enriching and practical for your current and or upcoming projects. Our upcoming events, um, right around the corner, next Thursday, November 28th, Opal RT Technologies will be introducing eFaser Sim, its features and applications. We encourage you to register at our website, www.opal-rt.com, in the events section. Real-time 2014 conference being held this year in Montreal that runs in early June, June 9th through the 12th, in conjunction with the Formula One weekend. We encourage you to get details and register for our user conference uh, at real time uh, at opal-rt.com. You can download our presentation within the next 24 hours at our website, again, www.opal-rt.com. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to set some time aside for some questions and answers. I will scroll through. I will, I'll encourage you to raise your hands and or write uh, your questions for our panelists. And I will uh, scroll through to see the questions that have been asked during the presentation. I have a question here from Ibrahim Abdul Hadi. Question states, with more complex protection and control schemes, how much coverage HIL testing can provide, even when executing thousands of test scenarios? Do we need to consider alternative testing methods to complement the limitations of HIL testing? Very good question. Perhaps uh, I see Vincent here itching to answer that question. Yes, our CTO, uh, Mr. Jean Belanger, will be glad to answer that question. Is the micro? Is it okay? So I think that is a very, very good question. We tried to answer that over the last 40 years. So the question is, what is what would be the best method if you have a limited time to make the testing? So uh, from our experience, now you need to have the uh, you need to test uh, firstly in the open loop the open loop mode. Then you try to find what is more difficult is to try to find the bad operation case. Proving that the system is operating well is easy, but proving that it will not operate is quite difficult. So you need to try to tune your power system and your early parameter to try to find problems, but then we have to use a random, ra random testing. So uh, if you have a limited time, three to four months to test a production, a production scheme, then you need to combine all the methods together, and then uh, you hope. Hmm? SLB? Oh yeah, this is what I mean to have automation. What we make about uh, random testing is that now you, you have to do a lot of random test automation, and and to vary the uh, the parameter. And in fact, you will use the simulator on uh, 24/7, on the 24 hours per day, and uh, seven, seven days a week, because you have to do a lot of tests for a limited period. So I don't know if if People will find better ways, but as of now, this is uh, 
what we found, uh, maybe uh, there is people in the audience who can share this, their, their own experience. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for your answers. Next question we have from uh, Mr. Peter Drinkwater. Question being, does HyperSim run on OP4500? Yes, it does. Yes, it does. Um, it can run on any um, Intel, Intel base, uh, base PC. It can even run on your uh, portable PC. On any standard PC, it will run on your portable PC in the offline mode. It can run on the OP uh, 4500 in the real-time mode, but it will be limited to three Intel core. Then if you want to go with 12 core or 12 CPU core or more, you will go to the uh, larger unit. We can go also to 32 core units and hundreds and hundreds of core if you use the second graphics. So you can scale scale up from one to many, many core. Excellent. Thank you very much. Great question. Next, we have a, a, I see a question from Xian Yao Li. Regarding the communication failure, what kind of communication channel it can test in Opal RT? You have an idea? Sorry, could you repeat the question? Yes. 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 Asks, regarding the Daniel asks, failure, regarding the communication what failure, kind of communication what channel, kind of communication can channel can it test? Uh, well, it depends on the protocol you're using. You can, you can test with IC6450, you can test with the DMP3, you can test on analog and digital IOs. Uh, we can test many, many different uh, protocols. Actually, we, as I mentioned sooner, we cover a lot of different protocols and drivers. Uh, if, if you need one that is not implemented yet, we can also uh, work, collaborate with you to implement it for you if you want to test something specific that we do not offer yet. Thank you. Another question we have from Hao Guo. Are there any 1588 to 2008 Synchronization functionality in HyperSim. Yes. Uh, uh, on HyperSim, we provide uh, different ways to, uh, to put GPS synchronization in the loop. So uh, we support IRFB, uh, we support um, uh, uh, IEEE uh, 1588, uh, we support also 1PPS uh, post uh, synchronization. So we have many different ways to uh, to synchronize the simulator, so uh, yes, it is supported. Thank you. Uh, next, we have a two-part question from Fortunato Vileya. How many generators, number of state variables? Uh, it's a tough question, uh, but uh, uh, of course, I presume is probably the most powerful simulator in the world. So uh, we did some tests with very, very, very large uh, uh, power grid. Uh, for example, we did some tests with uh, 2,000 three-phase bus system. Uh, in that example, uh, we put, for example, more than 500 generators. So I don't know the number of states, but it's probably uh, more than... Uh, a few thousand, so I don't, I, I don't know exactly the number of states, but it is a very, very, very large system. So, uh, of course, uh, I don't think the, 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 power, the, the power of HyperSim uh, will limit uh, your student. Okay, thank you, Beso. And Fortunato uh, goes on to ask, I agree for analysis, but the user should define a given number of simulation, in this case, or the software generate the scenarios, i.e., the different states of the Monte Carlo simulation? Uh, I'm not sure if I understood the question. I'll try to answer. Um, what, as I, what I've shown in this view is that you write a few lines of code, and that will automate uh, it, it. It does not work like 
filling in firmware, filling, in, filling in, in firmware, and then the, the software will create the test for you. But uh, the main work here is that Hadoop uh, Mac, I can show it here on the, on the screen, Hadoop Mac developed those, uh, those functions here. So they make it easy for you to, to run a, a great amount of tests using a few functions. This is very easy to understand. So even if you don't have knowledge of coding with C or whatever language, you can use it. And if you do have knowledge with C code, you can also write the macro functions and then add them up to the, the functions that already exist in Hypersim. So again, this software is very flexible. It's very customizable, so uh, the best way for us to tell you, to tell you that you can do what you want to do is uh, to call us and uh, we can discuss it together. The software uh, is very, very flexible. Thank you, Lucien. Next question we have, what is the technical difference between RTGS and HyperSim? Uh, RTS is of course a, a good tool, but uh, we have a lot of advantages uh, against RTGS. So uh, although RT is well known for uh, uh, its flexibility, so of course when it's time to interface with a different type of element, when, it, when it's time to interface with a different type of orb, uh, of course, of course uh, although RT is the, the leader in this area. Uh, after that, uh, the cost, the cost is sometimes something very important for engineers and uh, in, in your project, project you have, you have to take care, care of this aspect. So uh, the, uh, value the value of, of my uh, is, let's, let's say, say is uh, the, 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 the best, best tools, tools for the price, price you, you will, you will uh, spend. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, after that, uh, if we talk about all the future of HyperSim, um, for example, if you simulate big system, uh, HyperSim provides a lot of tools, for example, to, uh, to take care of allocation of the task on very large uh, platform with a lot of cores, so it's very easy to distribute the simulation. Uh, after that, you have a lot of small features, but um, I don't want to go too much in detail uh, on that, but... Uh, uh, <laughs> Maybe uh, Vincent, is it okay? Maybe Vincent could add um, one of the main features that we have over the last 15 years is that we support standard PC. So uh, you can use HyperSim on your desktop and you can, be, you can take advantage of the uh, parallel processing. So over, over the last uh, 10 years, most of the, our competitors in the aerospace and uh, automotive business they have put out the trend. Uh, I believe that uh, our colleague in the power grid uh, will see also very soon the, the, the advantage of that technology because we take advantage of the increased processing power of uh, Intel processor. So, and then... Uh, it's not only the processor, but the multi-core. So we support the shared, uh, shared memory. So we have no, we have no limit in the communication between processors. So the technology point of view it is quite good. And also we can simulate very fast power electronics on the FPGAs. So you can go from the graphics right to the, to the FPGAs. But, you know, uh, when you speak about RTDS and us, you speak about the two best in the world. So. Well said. Thank you, John. Next question we have here. Can I ask how to model the LAN and WAN communication functionalities in Hydro-Quebec's PNU project? Yes, I'll, I'll repeat. How can we model the LAN and WAN communication functionalities in Hydro-Quebec's PMU project? Uh, we, we have done that using a, a telecommunication simulator, a communication simulator 
which uh, we we bought off the shelf and which was connected to the remain of the system and we did uh, many we have a large report uh, assessing the impact of uh, delays uh, the loss of packet uh, and uh, and the impact of this event on the PDC so you need uh, a, a sort of communication simulator which will uh, emulate the traffic of uh, of inter of a sort of one system but this is still theoretical actually when we install pmu sample in the substation we g we give a mandate to the telecommunication group to perform actual tests on the on the pmu installed in the substation with the communication backbone of hydro Quebec and they provide us a report, a report uh, with actual measurement, etc. So in that case, we were able to compare the simulation with field measurement. So that's uh, that's my point. Excellent. Thank you, Dr. Kamwa. Next question we have here, uh, Peter again. What, what is the largest power system you can simulate on an OP5600? Uh, it's around, hold uh, on, I will uh, keep a calculation in my head. Uh, we are talking around 400, 500 the bus, three, three bus, uh, three phase bus system. So uh, around 100 uh, generator, by maybe more, and uh, so 500 uh, something like that. It's a 12 core machine, so uh, around uh, 40 bus uh, by by core. Okay, th thank, you thank you very much. much. I, I, realize I realize there are outstanding questions here that need to be addressed. We will have our appropriate uh, OPLRT delicate follow-up with you promptly to address these uh, questions. I want to thank our panelists, Dr. Kamwa, Etienne LeDuc, Vincent Lapointe, Mr. Jean Belanger, and our administrator, Mrs. Uh, Ms. Sabrina Benzig, did an outstanding job. Thank you, Thank you very, very much for participating, participating. And, you and you can pick, pick up this presentation tomorrow, tomorrow on our website. Bye-bye.